This is Amber Rose Washington, music producer and author of the best-selling book, Hiding from Myself. And you're listening to the Ghosts in the Valley podcast. Welcome to Ghost in the Valley Podcast. I'm your host, Al Cooley, and today I have a special guest. Her name is Jenny Colucci. She is a New Jersey-based paranormal investigator and team historian with a parasite experience. She is from Rochester, New York, and began investigating the paranormal while attending Rutgers University in Brunswick, New Jersey. Before joining Parasite, she investigated both in the United States and in Europe at such varied locations as the Sherlock Holmes Museum in London, the Biltmore Hotel in Coral Gables, Florida, and White Hill Mansion in Fieldsboro, New Jersey. The Parasite team has investigated numerous locations within New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. The team features investigators with varied backgrounds, such as law enforcement, science, education, and psychology. Jenny and the Parasite team are also called to do private investigations. Parasite Investigations uses a team approach they like to call science and sensitivity. This method combines the work of sensitives and mediums with evidence-based science. Jenny is one of the hosts of the Parasite podcast. She appeared recently in the documentary film by Brian Fedeminski, The Ghost of Somerville, the Old Dutch Parsonage. And I'll be right back with my conversation with Jenny Colucci right after these brief messages. This is Beth Darlington, paranormal investigator and owner of Access Paranormal, and you're listening to the Ghost in the Valley podcast. Okay, today I have uh, Jenny Colucci, uh, she is a New Jersey-based paranormal investigator and team historian with the Parasite Experience. She is also the co-host of the Parasite Podcast. Uh, welcome to the show, Jenny. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, that is a quite impressive uh, bio you sent me. So there are a few things in there I want to really pick your brain on. Sure. But before we get into all that, Mm-hmm. I mean, I know you've been asked this question a thousand times. What led you into the paranormal? I actually love this question. And just today I was speaking to some of my co-investigators and I realized I don't think I have even told them this story. So this is going to be a, a, a premiere of the story on your show. When I was about seven years old, as young girls do, we had a sleepover with some friends. And of course, we found the Ouija board, the requisite Ouija board everyone had back in that the day. Um, in in a closet and decided we're going to have a seance. So about four of my friends and I went up into a dusty attic closet and we brought out the Ouija board. And of course, we wanted to talk to her dog or something like that. Nothing, you know, not George. It was either George Washington or her dog. Those Mm -hmm. were the choices. Um, And we decided to do the dog. And suddenly I started having a sneezing fit. And one of the girls said, oh, Jenny's allergic to dogs the dog must be here. And that was the beginning of my debunking career because I am definitely the team skeptic, (laughs) the team debunker. And so that was my first case of debunking. I said to them, you don't think it could be the dusty attic that we're in, (laughs) the dusty closet that we're in? I think that's a little bit more likely. So um, that was my very first attempt, you know, at contacting uh, a spirit. But quickly, it was debunked. You know, mine was uh, growing up in a, in a, into, in a, in a haunted house as a, as, a, as a child from, uh, like, say, 12 years old oh, wow. to, to uh, 16. So I'm currently writing my book, which should be out next year, that's based on uh, the true ghost story uh, from the house. It's only taken me, like, 55 years to write this book. But, <laughs> yeah, well, I always like to hear like that, that those answers to that question, you know, because to have a paranormal team 
and to go out and th investigate these sites, uh, usually everybody on that team has a different story right. on what brought them into the paranormal. I was looking at your team. I like the fact that you're you're quite diversified in your backgrounds. How many are, are on your team? We have um, a core group of about five or six, and then we have maybe 13 who come on investigations when needed. I see you had like law enforcement, science, mm -hmm. education, psychology. Yes. Uh, any uh, mediums or uh, psychics? We do have two sensitives on our team. Yeah, mm -hmm. that we rely on. Definitely. Um, like I said, I am definitely the skeptic of the team. I am the scientist, um, very science focused. Um, and I think that we really complement each other very well that way. Yeah, you know, I, I, I listened to your episodes today. I was uh, on, on the road traveling. I found your podcast. I listened to, I think, episode three and four. Mm -hmm. uh, all three, most of four. Uh, I was, uh, and I, yeah, I, I found that out that you were the skeptic one uh, <laughs> on the team. I said, well, this ought to be interesting tonight. Yeah. <laughs> right. Especially, you know, you lived in a haunted house. So I never, I, I think I differ from a lot of people in this field in that I never did have an experience as a child. In fact, I was the one that, you know, you, that you may have heard this, that I was the one that people said, there's a monster under my bed. And I would say, no, there isn't. And rip the covers off, you know, kind of thing. I was always the one to say, don't be scared. There's nothing there. Well, you know, after doing this for so many years, I also found out, you know, the most of your uh, sites, you know, especially your uh, local sites you go to, but those are the ones that really fascinate us. The ones you go on Blueberry Street, you know, somewhere in the back streets of Tennessee, you know, like I went on one just a couple of months ago. Uh, I actually, I didn't take any equipment with me, just me and my cell phone. And I was on the impression I was going to go there and just do the interview of the man who had the haunted house. I actually got to walk through the house and it was a really quite an experience. So I don't dog the equipment that your team or any other team uses. I personally like to go in. If I'm pushed from behind, I find that more believable than if I got it off of one of my meters. But in other words, you do, I can go in there with a spirit box, you know, and you can get, right. uh, if you know, you know who you're targeting and if that spirit wants to connect with you, because you probably found out on, on some of your investigations they don't connect all the time, you know, or they pick who they want to connect with or mm -hmm. the certain device you're using, you know. That's true. That's true. Definitely. When it comes to equipment, we try not to call it evidence that we find on equipment. We try to call it an observation. So for example, you were talking about, uh, you know, an EMF meter, let's say. Mm. So we would say, well, there's an abnormal level of EMF. It's not evidence of a spirit. It's an abnormal level of EMF. Which is a basically it's a bunch of energy. Right. So if you you need that energy, that's why I felt in this house. I was uh, a couple months ago. There was so much energy; it was unbelievable. Wow! And and you know I have a list of these. Uh, e and you mentioned that on one of your the one of the shows about the, the equipment from old to new. You know sometimes old yes. can be better, like your uh, uh, Polaroid camera. I mean sometimes what you're capturing in that photo. Maybe it's in the mirror in the background or your cell phone, like my cell phone. I took it into this house. My screen cracked in exactly four places. Oh, wow. And I think it's from that pressure that was from the energy. I'm not really sure, but he felt it. I felt it. Uh, I've seen the shadow people. He's seen the shadow people. It, it was very, very active and I didn't have equipment. I wish I would have took something or have one of my friends of the paranormal team go with me. I think that's what he mm -hmm. wanted. I think he wanted another paranormal team to prove to him on certain answers he was looking for. But I tried to tell him, you know, sometimes you can't get all the answers you're looking for. You can get certain answers, you know, like, you know, I think what happened was so there's a paranormal team that went before I got there and the psychic actually was communicating with the one child. And the first question she asked was, you're not going to make me leave, are you? I don't know if there's been people in there wanting to do like, and he doesn't want them to leave. So uh, this house was there, you know, the late the late 1700s, you know. So uh, my my thinking was after getting the whole history of his story was it was built on the in the burial ground. But getting back to your stories and your equipment, I've seen that you know you go from K2 meters, uh, dowsing rods to 
the laser grid. We do. We do. But, you know, you make a great point. I mean, honestly, sitting in a room and having the hair stand up on your arms. I mean, that's your your equipment yourself. Right. You know, the reason I, the reason I say that, because I did a documentary myself like uh, 20 years ago. And uh, I was on a bridge <laughs> in Pennsylvania. And it's a very active bridge. And I had I hired a team of actors. I hired my my sound crew, my lighting crew. I, I really went into this thing. Uh, I got nothing. I got nothing at all on this bridge. And right. so, so my cr crew, they all go up the hill. I said, you know what? I'm going to go down to the gully under the bridge. I just want to get some more shots of the bridge itself. It was that time I was alone. And no equipment was on. I had equipment there, but no, the, nothing was on. And that's when I was violently mm -hmm. pushed from the back. I mean, like somebody flicked their fist and wow. just hit you in the back with it. That's incredible. And you're telling yourself, you know, like you're a skeptic, you know, I'm, I'm telling myself, you know, it could have been muscle, muscle spasm. It could be, and then you're pushed again. And then you're, somebody like just real hard flicks your ear from behind. Uh, and then you hear like a growling noise, you know, then there's nothing there. Uh, so when I got to the top of the bridge, when I, the actress I had play that part of the ghost under the bridge, she knew the area. So she was petrified. <laughs> so, right. The story. Right, right. So, you know, sometimes, uh, and like I said, I don't, I don't, I use that equipment before and I love your one, uh, member on your team. Is it Anthony that made, that, that made Anthony. the box EMPT or the empty box, he called it. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. I love that because, you know, back at that time, 20 some years ago, a friend of mine made his own box up that we were using. And it was actually uh, a K2 meter combined with an EVP or a, a spirit box, so, you know, and it was all together. So I don't know how he did it. And it worked fantastic, but it, it only worked when it wanted to work. You know, sometimes right. you don't get, like I always say, you know, uh, paranormal investigations like fishing, you know, you either get a lot of fish or you get nothing. <laughs> That's a great analogy. I really like that analogy. I really do. Or you move down the beach a little bit. <laughs> right, right. You, get, you know, kind of thing. Or sometimes the spirit just, they, they just want, they just connect with who they want to connect with from your team. Exactly. Exactly. We had that happen this last weekend. Um, I had a gentleman asking questions and, and he wasn't getting anything. And he just said, why don't you try? Which I think is so great, you know, because really we're all there as a team together. Um, it doesn't matter which one of us gets it. So sure enough, I asked and and there was an answer. So maybe it, it's because I'm a woman. Maybe they know me because I've been there before. Who knows? So being a skeptic, you you want to prove. Uh, you know, I, I have a word I, I love. It's pre-bunking. So the first thing I'll do is go into a place and say, what's going to look paranormal that is not paranormal? For example, the windows are going to be shaking because it's windy outside or something like that. Um, the REM pod's going to go off because the floor shakes, that kind of thing. And that's, we do, so we do some pre-bunking. And then after that, yes, I think I'm your best friend as a skeptic, I always say, if you're trying to prove a haunting, because if I can't prove that it isn't, your case is a lot stronger. I like to go in open-minded. That's why I love mm -hmm. these private investigations on these homes on uh, nine times out of 10. It's not, it's not a uh, paranormal uh, activity. It's a, uh, it is a, t a tree hitting a house or uh, a pipe in the basement. Or sometimes that was, I had one where it, there was a banging in the other room, but there's nothing there. Found out the little banging they were hearing was, it was the cat going in out the back door. Oh. Yeah, oh, the, oh, the uh, cat door, you know. <laughs> that's, it's, that's like a horror movie, Al. The cat, it was the cat. It was a cat, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was looking at your uh, your uh, your bio. I love mm -hmm. that you, you know, because you've been uh, uh, a different investigator in the United States and in Europe. Yes. And uh, I want to hear the one about Sherlock Holmes Museum in London. Oh, speaking of getting pushed, that actually happened to me on the staircase at the Sherlock Holmes Museum in London. Um, that was probably the only time I've been touched. And sure enough, you know, I, I had a backpack on and I felt as if it fell down off my arm. So I went to pick it up and it hadn't fallen. <laughs> so something definitely had rubbed my arm pretty good. And just in the middle of an open staircase. So that that stayed with me for a while, definitely. And, you know, museums are hard because they're objects, right? For, brought in from all over the place. So who knows what energy is from the objects, what energy is from the building. Um, we, we investigated um, Strauss Mansion recently. Same thing. It was an empty mansion. They brought all the almost all the furniture in from other places. So that that's always a little layer, an extra layer, I think you need to take into account. So the museum and uh, Sherlock Holmes, 
<laughs> would you say it was haunted? I would at this point. Yes. I definitely. mean, because you were pushed. Um, yeah, I was touched, definitely touched on the arm. And also um, I had very clear voices coming through definitely on the recorder that I just couldn't explain. For me, that that's one of that's my thing. I love to hear the I love the voices. I my digital recorder is probably my favorite piece of equipment. Um and hearing and actually hearing um a disembodied voice, which I did hear there as well, is probably the the creepiest thing that can happen to me. So I, I stopped trying to explain to people about, you know, what's real and what's not real because you know, it's like anything else in life, unless you experience it yourself, mm -hmm. don't really take full, you know, ownership of that's my opinion. Right. No, it's true. It's true. I mean, you can trust your teammates. We we have amazing trust between us. I mean, if Anthony or Frankie, who you saw on the podcast, say it happened, it happened in my mind. You know, there's that complete trust. And I think you have to have the trust when you're in the middle of the night in an abandoned building type of thing. Yeah, um, I like the way your team plays off each other, you know, and Anthony. Yeah. And, uh, what's the other one's name? Uh, Frankie. Frankie. Frankie, yeah. Right. Yeah. He's, he's the psychologist. Yeah. And, and therapist and, you know, which is great because some of it involves that kind of thing, even for the mm -hmm. spirits therapy. Right. Because I've seen on your uh, bio, you said you, your team approaches like, you know, science and sensitivity. Yes. Explain to me or to my listeners what that is. So we are big fans of uh, the original ghost hunter, Hans Holzer. Uh, we actually wear our, our team shirt has a Holzer quote on it. We, got permission from the family to use it, um, designed by Frankie. Uh, we, we really believe in combining that use of like Hans Holzer did. He used the mediums, Ethel, he would bring her in, and then he would follow that up with actual research and investigation and combine those two things. So we will use our sensitives, but we will also use our equipment, our research, that type of thing. So we try to combine them. So you combine the science plus the... Right. Uh, sensitive so that that you might gather through the exactly. psychic. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. I love that. You know, that's uh, part of being diversified with right. your team. You know, and and sensitivity has another meaning too. In that, you know, we do private investigations, and these are people who who are hurting or looking for answers or you know something like that. And it's important that we that we treat that with respect and sensitivity. You get different points of view on, you know, can you move the spirit on? You think it can be moved on. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's so many different, uh, and I hate to bring in religion and everything, anything, because, you know, the Catholics believe in purgatory, and there's that time after your death that you're judged whether you're going to go to heaven or hell. Protestants, Baptists, you know, they believe as soon as you die, there is no thinking about it. I mean, you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. But, you know, if you're judged on your Christianity during your life to go to heaven, then there's a little bit of purgatory there. I, I, know, right. I, I, don't, I don't know on the spirits if they haven't moved on or have they moved on. They've Some of them have come back to get a final answer. Never had that proper closure. Right. You know, that's, that's another really touchy subject. Sure. Well, and then the question also is, is it our job? Is right. it our job as paranormal investigators to move someone on? And I would say no. In my opinion, uh, I've only been involved in two demon cases and okay. neither, neither one of those I dealt with. I will not because I'm not qualified. Right. Uh, I don't believe in going and doing and And I think you had mentioned on one of your episodes of if you're not sure what you're doing, don't do it. Right. You know, because right. it, it can be dangerous. It's, it's very true. If you leave that portal open. Like I think it, what was mm -hmm. it? Uh, uh, was at the uh, seance. If you leave that portal portal open, you're asking for trouble. Right. My grandmother used to say, "Don't call up what you can't put down." <laughs> exactly. I like that. <laughs> Good advice. Yeah. Yes, I agree, and I definitely live by it. Um, yeah, definitely. My one question was, mm -hmm. I think you already answered part of it. It was, have, have you or any of your team been hurt during an investigation? I have not seen that happen. No. I mean, you've been pushed, no. but I don't think, or touched out. I don't think you've been hurt. Touched uh, and pushed me, but no, not her. No, definitely not. So th fortunately, because it sounds like you have, and that doesn't sound like a fun thing. I haven't really been hurt. I've been, like you, I've been uh, pushed hard from the back, more of a punch in the back, but it would, I wouldn't say it was a bite or a cut or a abrasion. A scratch, right. Uh, no, it was none of that. I was, I was pushed. I was 
really right. violently pushed, but it wasn't nothing I couldn't, I couldn't handle, but right. I was curious because, you know, some people, some investigation teams have been. I think we have to be very careful with that in terms of um, assigning intention to a spirit. You know, I mean, I think they could just be trying to get your attention by, by pushing you or anything they can do to get your attention. And I think sometimes people go too far to say, oh, they're, they're evil or they're mad or, and I don't think we can assign emotion or intention to a spirit. Even with voices, you hear this, you know, get out kind of voice, right? And it sounds awful that, you know, generic get out. And, and you know what? We laugh, but we've all gotten that. I mean, I'm sure you have. I've oh, gotten yeah. get out, but you have to be careful. About a year ago, I believe I had a guest from another paranormal uh, uh, podcast. He was on, he mm -hmm. says, my house is haunted. So if you hear anything, it's my house. I said, okay, <laughs> but I didn't hear anything, right? So when I'm editing the podcast back, there was a bunch of like, you know, in the background. Mm. And I kind of zeroed in on that and the audio. It was saying, hi, Cooley. That's my last name. Right. Coming from his side. So in the back, in, in, from his house. So I thought that was very strange. But did you, you said you slowed it down or did you just play it at regular speed? I played at regular speed, but I mm -hmm. brought the audio up as far as I can bring it and focused it in that little section. Right. Cleaned it up. Once I cleaned it up and got in there, it was high quality. Wow. You know, and I thought, so I texted him back because you know, I got a oh, welcome from your one of your ghosts. I mean. That's interesting. I mean, yeah, definitely. He, he wasn't surprised. So. Right. Right. So, you know, I, I come across so many different things and that's fine uh, because I'm sure that when things happen, it kind of turns your head around. Sure. Exactly. You know, we experience poltergeist activity with often with teenagers um, in the house. You know, we have an angry teenager who's, you know, getting the lights on and off. And that that I've seen in investigations. Any investigations stand up more than another? I mean, that you can think of. Oh, so many. <laughs> so how do, that's such a hard question. Yeah, that is a hard it's one. A really, <laughs> it's a really hard question. I mean, I can say that some places that have a reputation, like the Hinsdale House in New York State, it definitely lives up to that reputation to the point where you walk in and the activity is immediate, just immediate, immediately a voice in, talking to you in, out loud in your ear, equipment going crazy, figures on the SLS camera. We like to call that paranormal lasagna. We call it that because of layers. Like, we, I mean, we're looking for layers, right? Like if you have all these different things happening at once, it, it sort of, like you said, turns your head. Okay, something's going on here. So, you know, that you have houses like that where you expect the activity and you get it type of thing. But then there are some places where you don't necessarily expect it and it surprises you. It really, you know, takes you, like you said, like a bridge or something like that. And I think people think, oh, it has to be an old creepy haunted house. Mm -hmm. But really, it could be a supermarket, you know, at night. Um, you mentioned the land, right? An Indian burial ground, something like that. It, mm -hmm. it, it really could be anywhere. And you know where it usually isn't? A cemetery. <laughs> that's where. Right. That's the only place I've never seen any activity. And I always think, would you hang around there? <laughs> I don't know. So I don't do too many on cemeteries. You mentioned the house with the uh, Indian burial ground. You know, that house was moved up the hill to its current location. Right. So did the, were the spirits at the original location? Uh, because they moved the house up with a team of horses on logs in mm -hmm. the early 1800s. That's where the records of that house start. But he's still trying to do some background checks on that. My thinking is since he was digging his, plowing his garden, he's come up with all these Indian artifacts around that house. And he has witnessed like a image of a Indian running down the tree line of his property wow. at night. So that's the reason I say that, you know, because uh, I have so many stories on Indian burial grounds. I've, I've heard so many cases where there is a, a story that's just been told so many times. It's just thought of as true. Something like a young girl who hanged herself. Her, and, and then we do research and we find that that never happened. It just, right. it's just has a life of its own. You said, if you've seen it yourself, then you believe it, right? Yeah. You've heard it, you've seen it, you believe it. I'll be right back with the rest of my conversation with Jenny Colucci right after these brief messages. This is Betsy Kulikowski, author of the Veritas Codex series, and you're listening to Ghost in the Valley podcast. When you were asking about investigations that stand out, I, it's 
it sounds so convenient to say, but honestly, the ones that stand out are my most recent ones at this theater that we um, have started investigating. And the reason is that it, I've never been to a location that hadn't been investigated before. So, you know, I feel like everywhere I go, except for private homes, that is, but everywhere you go nowadays, that's quote haunted, people have been there, you know, they've done things and you have some background, but this is a place that hadn't been investigated and, you know, had claims of paranormal activity. And we were asked to come in and see what we thought. And of course, the first time, you know, you maybe get a hit on a REM pod, you might get, you know, you think you hear something, but not much kind of thing. But I've never had a location that I could go back to repeatedly and really build a case for it, you know, and start to get names and research those names. And it's been an amazing experience. And then last weekend on Saturday, we did something really amazing. We brought in all the experts that would come to work together on this theater. So we brought um, people who were experts in ITC, um, people who were psychics, psychic mediums. We brought them all together and said, what do you got? Go for it. Take a look at our wonderful theater and let's all work together here. Like that para unity idea. Mm -hmm. And it went so well, so, so well. Was that a private investigation? This is a theater in New Jersey that it's it's a current it's an operating theater. Oh, it's operating it, still today. Okay, yep, still, still today. It was built in the 1920s. Um, started as a vaudeville movie house in the 1920s, and of course, with COVID, it was shut down for 15 months. And we had this idea that we would help out. I mean, it was really a philanthropic thing. We thought, let us you know, bring in investigations, bring in teams, bring in the public and have them say, pay to investigate, you know, go see a show. And then after the show, investigate the theater all night and, you know, hopefully put some money back into the, the theater. They suffered so much mm -hmm. really with the pandemic. So, you know, it began as a philanthropic thing, but it became absolutely fascinating. It's most of the activity I experienced there, I have never experienced before. Things like slamming doors, opening doors, bottles falling over in front of your eyes, like a lot of that type of, you know, kinetic stuff. Yeah, that was my next question, as a matter of fact, was uh, your recent investigations. Right. That's cool. You went right. right into it. <laughs> oh, I love it. I mean, it just, it's been so great for us, this, this theater. It really has. Because how often do you get a chance to go back and go back again and and check things and, and experience them at different times. You mentioned one night might be quiet. One mm -hmm. night might be, you know, and that's happened to us. We've had nights where, like I said, the door is opening, you have smells, you have heat signatures in some of the seats, you have all this, you know, qu these observations. And then some nights, just quiet, just quiet. But we're starting to piece together the history and who might be there. You know, we had an idea, but then when we brought the psychics in, you know, we had another level, you know, these are really reputable people. And, you know, they hit on things that we already knew, and brought us to another level, really. So it's a team effort. And we just want to open it up to people, teams to come in and research it, investigate there. That's so cool, because it really sounds yeah. like you love what you're doing. And uh, yes, you're totally into it. And mm -hmm. it's a beautiful theater, Al. beautiful Greek revival theater. I mean, it's really breathtaking. On your podcast. Sure. Uh, is, how long have you been doing this? This Actually, this team is only one year old. Exactly. Um, on Halloween, we were one year old. So we've all investigated with other people in other places or alone, but we just came together a year ago. This team, Parasite. I like the little song clips you guys put in there. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you, know you have to. You have to. Have, we laugh. I mean, we do. We laugh. We we. We really get along well. We laugh. We bounce, like you said, we bounce off of each other really well. And it's it's great. I, I have to say that it was Anthony and Frankie who formed the team. And then it was me who begged to get on it <laughs> when I met them. I was like, please take me, please take me, because they were such wonderful people and had the right idea about what they were doing. Um, it wasn't for the, the fame. It wasn't for the shock value. It was really for the research and how do we advance this field? And, and let's think of some new things. I mean, I, I talked to them about string theory and quantum oh, physics oh, yeah. and, and 
and all those new things that we're, we're looking into with, um, with the paranormal field. And they say, go for it. Let's do some experiments. You know, it, they're great. They're great guys. Wonderful guys. And when you get to use different equipment, too, you know, mm-hmm. especially what uh, Anthony is. It Anthony? Mm-hmm. I, I just like the fact that he so into like trying new equipment, uh, making the equipment, made yes. you a box, made him a box, you know. And yep. uh, and the, the, what, the crystal inside the box. No, it's a, it, the, the crystal is actually an antenna just like the antenna is an antenna. So you can touch either one really. And the the whole idea behind that is it's like a jewel box or like a music box Mm -hmm. and not so much like a REM pod because you're going into an old house, let's say like a Chrysler mansion, who I mentioned as one of my absolute favorite investigations. And, you know, you're having, let's say the lady of the house, you know, a long time ago is going to look at that and think, okay, that looks familiar to me. It's pretty, it's handcrafted, something like that versus, some type of, you know, round electronic thing that makes a lot of noises I don't recognize. So yeah, the crystal, we've had a lot of luck with that box, a lot. I think it's interesting to a spirit, really. I do too, you know, and, uh, but there's some spirits, you know, what really gets me and I thought that the floor is me every time is when you come across a spirit and they don't know they're dead. Oh, I had the need writing this book and going through with my sister and, my eighth grade teacher, I remember way back, I'm, I'm aging myself now, going back into the seven, 19, uh, 1970, mm-hmm. my eighth grade teacher and everybody put like, she's out there because she was seeing invisible people. She had little green men or gray men sitting in uh, your seat in class. So when I would go into school one day, she says, you can't sit here because so-and-so is sitting there. So, you know, he's the grace, oh. you know, and I was like, okay, you know. I have moved across the, the, the <laughs> but you know, what she told me back then and what I'm finding out now is the same thing, you know, and mm-hmm. so maybe label her crazy or what. So, you know, things can revert to 2020 mm-hmm. and that's why I was getting to that equipment that you guys were talking about on the podcast today was sometimes you may rely on that Polaroid or that infrared camera, but it is nice to have, like that device he made, you know, the empty EMPT box. box, right. Uh, yeah. So I love that. I really do. Cause uh, you know, he's still, he's going forward, you know, he's trying new things yes. and trying to maybe get in, in another angle of co- exactly uh, communicating with the spirits. Exactly. And I mean, we do, we love the old school as well. We have a team member who literally only uses a pendulum. He does not own any other equipment. Right. Well, you don't want to go just go through your toolbox. If you're going to a Gettysburg home, you might want to dress up as that time period or, right. you know, something they can relate to. But I had other guests on told me, you know, you think with all this new equipment people's walking through these places with, they should know what, even now with the laser grids on the wall, they're, they're, right. they, they're probably learning as they're, we're going, you know. Maybe. Yeah. That's an interesting, that that's assuming that that consciousness is really a higher level. Right. Yeah. I don't know if I totally go along with that, but uh, yeah. that, you that's know, an always... intelligent hunting for sure. <laughs> In really the sense of the word. Right. So I listen to everybody's point of view. Of course we should. You know, cause my first guest, my very first episode when I had a live guest on. <laughs> okay. Uh, he was an atheist, you know, so that really set me back because mm-hmm. I wasn't prepared. You know, so I wasn't looking at the, when I asked him, do you think you can move a spirit on? So his answer was definitely not. No way. Because there's nowhere to move it to. Right. Exactly. So where are you, <laughs> where are you? Yeah. Where, where are you going to go? Where are you moving this spirit to? Mm-hmm. Because you're killing it. Right. You're killing the spirit. You're not moving it anywhere. You know, if we don't believe in heaven or hell. Right. Where, where are you moving this spirit to? Uh, you know, and I didn't know how to answer that. I really didn't. I was right. just, because I'm just raised a certain way. and Sure, uh, and, sure. But then when you hear all these other points of views of even uh, Native American Indian on, you know, mm-hmm. how the ground is so sacred, earth. Right. You know, and disrupting earth could be not good. Right, right. Or even that a tree or a river has its own energy. Anything that's living has its own Exactly, spirit. exactly. Because <laughs> I was a child and I remember going into a Indian uh it was a gift shop and an old Indian was sitting on the front porch. I mean, a real mm-hmm. Indian. And he was taking his coffee, but he was letting the coffee go back in the cup 
of a spoon, like two feet high. I asked oh. him, he did it like three times. I was, what are you doing? I'm like 10 years old. And the Indian says, I'm releasing the evil spirits from the coffee. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, you know. So my dad, he comes on, he's all almost his nonsense. Let's go, you know. Right. And so years ago, years later, years later, 40 years later, I'm in a, I'm at work and my coworker, I'm walking through the the shop and he's doing the same thing with his coffee, let it drip back down this cup. Oh my goodness. And I says, Bob, what are you doing? He said, I'm releasing the evil spirits from my coffee. <laughs> that doesn't, wouldn't that blow you away? You know? Wow. So I'm like, yeah. Oh so then I had a story, goodness. I had a story brought to me. It was on, it was one of my past episodes in Indian Johnny. And in that story that was sent to me is the same story I just told you. Wow. You know, and it's, it's stuff like that that really blows me away. Sure. Know, it comes like full circle. And so is it crazy what he was doing with the, so you know what I do now? Every time I make coffee, I don't want, I let the coffee drip. I love coffee. it. Just in case. Just, Al, in, just case. in case. Right, you're, right. you're like, well, and just in case he's right, I better do it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, I mean, I, I grew up in New York state. So, I mean, definitely, you know, so much, so much native American history there. Lots of towns you can't pronounce. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Same as New Jersey. I see Jersey. Exa- oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, very much so. But you always have to take that into account. I mean, absolutely. So as far as you're investigating, you go out as far as what? New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania? Pencil- yeah, most are in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. We're, we have an investigation in New York State this weekend at the Mid-Orange Reformatory in Warwick. Have you been there? No, I have not. We go to the big ones, you know, Pennhurst. Like asylums? Yep. You could They open up for tours, like even Ohio. Mansfield uh, Reformatory. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, matter of fact, we're going there in a couple of weeks. There's one in Pennsylvania, Hillview Manor. It's very mm-hmm. active. I know Hillview. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and there's, uh, like I said, the Hogbeck Bridge. That's always very, I've been there two or three times. Pennsylvania is, is full of it's amazing loaded. places. loaded. Right, right, right. Yeah, it really is. I see you were recently appeared in a film documentary. Explain that. I did. I did. I live in a, I live in a town called Somerville, New Jersey. It's a very small town, two miles square. Uh, You can walk everywhere, Um, but it's an old town. It it was in the late 1800s. It was, it was really formed and, you know, it's beautiful. The Victorian homes, you know, the very stately homes and, and uh, old buildings are gorgeous and everything. And, and a local gentleman, um, Brian Vadimsky, he's actually an actor as well. You may have seen him on TV on uh, Discovery ID, I believe he's on sometimes. And he is also a filmmaker and he decided, well, this is my hometown. I'm going to make a series about the ghost stories of Somerville. And it really was about ghost stories. And that was very foreign to me with my approach that you're getting an idea of. It's much more scientific, that Mm -hmm. type of thing, research. And these were really ghost stories, you know, ghost stories. And, And I thought, well, that's not for me. You know, I'm not, I'm not, that's not my thing. But the second, installment of the the films uh, was about something called the old dutch parsonage it's a it's a beautiful old building in our town and i thought okay i love that building and how can i what can i offer here so i did i approached him and i said you know what the story you're telling is very much a residual haunting story i want to tell your viewers what that is type of thing and it just became a friendship between us and i ended up um really talking about what a residual haunting is, a historical haunting, and, and how that was affecting that building. And I think it, I hope it added something to it. It's, um, it's been released, it's out, so you can check it out. He's a, he's a great storyteller. Where do you uh, get a hold of that, Alec, on YouTube or? Yeah, yeah, it's on Tubi as well. I wanted to do so, I wanted to be involved in my community, really, because I investigate everywhere else except where I live. So I thought, how can I, how can I help here? And it really, it really kind of jived. There really was a, a, his, a historical type haunting going on there um, to the point where it was so repetitive. It was like stopping at a certain step every day type of thing. The things that you think of as a residual haunting. Uh, the uh, ghost of Somerville, mm-hmm. uh, the old Dutch parsonage. Is that a series or is it like just one? So the Ghost of Somerville is a series, and that's just the second in the series. The first one was a a ghost story at a home. 
in Somerville. So you're in the second part? Yeah, the second one. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The first one was the ghost of Mrs. Mix. So, and the second one was the old Dutch Parsonage. We have actually two buildings across from each other that are amazing historical buildings run by the New Jersey Park Service, the Wallace House. And believe it or not, George, we always say George Washington slept here, right? But George Washington actually did sleep there for six months with his wife. So six months, that was pretty significant. Mm -hmm. And that's at the Wallace House across from the Parsonage. Yeah, really amazing buildings in our community. Anything special you have coming up? Yeah, <laughs> yes. Rest, Al, rest. <laughs> well, you know, I, I was going to say that, you know, you're a paranormal investigator. You're going to all these sites. Uh, you, uh, you're you in the documentary. You have your own podcast. Yes. Uh, yes. So, yeah. Does, does we, this girl ever rest? Let me tell you, in May, we had investigate. We had about five investigations. And I, we, since starting, it just took off. This this group just took off. And it, it's time. I think we're going to finish up this weekend with the mid orange reformatory. And I think we're going to take a little bit of a break. <laughs> a well-deserved break. Yeah. Yeah. Well-deserved. Yeah. We, we've really just had so many wonderful investigations this year and in every kind of weather. I mean, Chrysler Mansion, we had an ice storm <laughs> that, you know, the windows were rattling. It was minus 29, you know, outside. And, you know, we, oh, it was, it was, unbelievable but that's the adventure of it isn't it oh yeah definitely isn't it yeah yeah i'm going to put all your links at the bottom of this episode that you sent me uh, so they can come on and check your podcast check your paranormal team anything Thank else you. you got going on your tiktoks and your instagram everything <laughs> yeah. you get sent i'll uh, put at the bottom of this episode and i definitely want to have you back on next year and Thank we'll catch you. you back up on your new activities <laughs> i know you're going to be busy <laughs> Oh, yeah, definitely. Year two. It, the Parasite Experience, year two. We're ready. Awesome. Awesome. After a rest. After, you know, I'm taking me a rest, too. And at the, in December, I'll have another one and I'm done for the year. Right. Right. Take some, get my body back into shape and kick it back out again next year, starting season five, you know. That's amazing. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my plan anyway, you know, and uh, just keep plugging away, you know. And I uh, applaud you for... Uh, what you're doing and uh, coming on the show and sharing <laughs> your stories. Thank you so much. It was a joy to meet you. Thank you. I want to thank Jenny Colucci, who is a paranormal investigator and team historian with the Parasite Experience, also the co-host of the Parasite Podcast, and also dipping her feet into acting in the series The Ghost of Somerville, The Old Dutch Parsonage. Thank you, Jenny, and I will have all of her links at the bottom of this episode. This is Al Cooley from Ghost in the Valley podcast. Mm -hmm.